Hi and welcome to this YouTube series on Landsweeper for cybersecurity. I am Esben, community manager here at Landsweeper, um, and I'll be taking you through the cybersecurity options within Landsweeper. In the first interaction video, we explained where Landsweeper fits in the cybersecurity landscape, and now we will start with an actual in-depth look at the specific cybersecurity related data Landsweeper retrieves from a single asset. So let's get started. So we head over to Landsuper to take a look at what has been able to find in our network. So just to kind of showcase what uh, Landsuper provides information wise for security specifically, we're going to start with uh, simply an IP address, uh, something that you'll most likely be familiar with. Um, you get an alert from your security center, um, maybe from your specific security guy that you have in your, in your company. Um, or your, your network traffic monitor, you get an IP address and you know something's fishy, that's basically your starting point. With that starting point, we're go simply going to start a search within Landsuper. We're going to put in the IP address and you go to the machine itself. So here right away, we have our overview page of our obviously Windows machine in this case. Um, so we know it's a Windows machine. We know it's running Windows 10 Pro. Uh, we know the manufacturer model, um, some hardware details. Um, as well as you can see on the right hand side, we have serial and express code, which results in automatic warranty retrieval. So we know exactly the warranty status of this device. Um, we also have Active Directory information, uh, network interface information. You can even see some antivirus information. Um, you know, there's already on this just overview or summary page, there's a lot of information already there for you. And you can also see which user was last logged in to this device as well. This is hyperlinked. So if you mouse over it, you get some additional details. You can also head over to the user and get even more details. So just by entering the IP address and heading over to the Landsweeper summary page, we haven't even gone into the details yet. You already get an overview of um, exactly what type of machine it is, um, who's been using it, disk information, network information, and more. So obviously, if there's something going on, um, you want more detailed information. This is where we start heading into the config tab that we have here. Um, I, I won't show off everything here. Um, I'll kind of pick and choose things that are um, more related to security. Um, so within the Windows tab here, I think one of the more important aspects here is our quick fix. So here we get a list of all the Windows updates that have been installed on the machine. Um, you can see the dates that they've been installed on, kind of a description, whether it's a security only update or just kind of like a general, um, like a patch Tuesday update, for example, a monthly roll up. And obviously this can be used to verify whether um, the machine has installed the latest patches or is still on a, an outdated version and is missing specific security patches. Then we'll head over to our services. Obviously having an overview of all the services that are running on the machine is important. Um, you know, specific malware or, or viruses are known to either stop um, specific services, like trying to stop your antivirus service, um, or they um, add additional services that actually perform tasks for them, uh, be it send back information somewhere or simply, um, you know, messing up your computer itself. So here we get an overview of all the uh, services that are running on the machine. We also get to see whether um, they are currently running or stopped and their start mode as well. So very useful to find um, if there is a specific service that shouldn't be running on this server, uh, on the server or workstation um, itself. Then we'll take a look at shares. Again, useful to find uh, machines that have specific shares on them that, you know, maybe folders that shouldn't be shared for some reason um, or that have, you know, way too much permission. So what you can also do is report on this, not only for one specific machine, but for all machines. Uh, but that does allow you to get an overview of all the shares, for example, that are on your network, uh, along with the permissions um, and the user, etc so that you get an overview of your entire network and not just one machine. So another interesting one for um, network security specifically is we have our network tab, um, which you know gives an overview of all the network interfaces on your machine, um, as well as more specific information like the MAC addresses, um, as well as you know, DNS um, and IP subnet, uh, things that, that might be uh, of interest when maybe you only find a MAC address, which might not be the primary MAC address for that machine you know, there, there, as you can see here, there's WAN mini ports that also have their MAC address. So even with just a MAC address, you can find out 
the specific or you can find the specific machine that you're looking for. So another big security issue within most companies are the users. So we'll head over to our user info tab. So under user info, we get a list of all the logons that have been scanned from that machine uh, along with the logon time. So obviously very useful um, to find out when a specific user logged onto the machine. So under the user tab, we get a list of all the local accounts that are on the machine. Um, we can also head over to groups, take a look at all the groups that are on the machine, as well as the users in specific groups. Um, for now, we're gonna move on to software. So here we get an overview of all the software that is installed on the machine, um, as well as the version and the publisher and the install date. All of these metrics get used um, for security really. Versions obviously important for uh, making sure that your software is up to date, especially with the you know, multiple vulnerabilities that are released every month. Um, and, and security fixes that are, that are put out. You know, just thinking at the top of my head, Google Chrome gets security fixes all the time. Um, so it's important to kind of, you know, have a way to check whether your uh, Chrome versions are, are up to date or not. Install date uh, is also very useful security wise. You can check with Landsweeper what kind of software has been installed recently, which also provides you the capability of kind of monitoring um, which software is being entered into your environment and, and control whether that's really software that should be in your environment or not. Um, for now, we're gonna continue on with features. Um, so Landsweeper also scans the installed features of both workstations and servers. This allows you to find um, specific machines that might have a feature installed that shouldn't be installed. One very popular one um, and well-known one that you can see here is the SMB1, which is down here at the bottom. SMB1, well-known for WannaCry. Obviously, you might wanna take a look at machines that still are using that protocol or have the feature installed uh, and remove it unless it's absolutely necessary. And then next up, antivirus. Um, the tab antivirus here simply shows a list of the detected antivirus. We actually get more information if we go back to our summary page. So on the summary page, we also see what antivirus is installed as well as whether it is enabled and up to date. So we also have uh, status indicators here. Again, similar to the previous things, if you want to have a complete overview of the antivirus status within your entire network, that's possible with our reporting, which we'll cover later on. So another very interesting one is event log information. So by default, Landsweeper will scan all the uh, Windows error events um, there are options in the configuration to scan additional types of events. Um, they're not scanned by default simply for um, data reasons, otherwise your database might explode all at once um, if you pull it back all the event logs. So, but you can scan other types of events, but by default, error event logs are scanned. So you can take a look at the specific error events that are retrieved um, and see if you can find anything there wrong with the machine. Another thing that you can do with Landsweeper is, um, is alerting. Very useful also with the events that you scan. Uh, we allow for specific event alerts. So those alerts will be sent out to you as soon as a specific event has been scanned, uh, really allowing you to be alerted as soon as you know, a, a troublesome event that you've seen before uh, gets detected. You get alerted so you can take a look at it right away. And then another interesting one, the last one that we'll cover here is history. So history is both for software and hardware. Um, as you can see here, there are indicators what type of um, software is installed, what type of software is removed. This also covers updating software. So updating software will be first a removal of the software, then an update of the, or an installation of the software. Um, so those followed quickly together means that there's been an update. An example of that you can see here with Google Chrome, you can see that the older version was, was uninstalled first. Um, and then the new version was installed just after, uh, which obviously means it's simply been updated. Also, Windows updates. You can see here two Windows updates. Uh, those are also listed. So now we'll move in a bit deeper into software itself and take a look at uh, our software tab. And we'll be greeted with the overview of Windows software. So here we have basically an overview of all the Windows software installations that have been scanned within our network. Uh, so as you can see, you have the software name, version, publisher, and then on the right-hand side, the uh, number of times it has been detected within our network. 
Uh, you can also filter on these uh, on these columns. So if you want to find a specific software um, and check how many times it's been installed, you can do that as well. Simply head over to the software filter, uh, type in, for example, secure. Um, and we'll take a look here at um, our F-Secure installations. Um, so I want to see all of those. And we get a complete list of all the machines that have F-Secure installed. Again, these are hyperlinked too, so I could go to each of these individual devices and look at their hardware, um, their software, etc., as we showed earlier. So going back to the overview, if you want to look for specific versions, you can also do that by just clicking the version number itself. So for example, if you want to find all the uh, Microsoft Silverlight installations with you know, this specific version, um, then you can just click on the version and it will sh only show you uh, Silverlight's installations with that specific version. Um, if we head back again and take a look at all of the Silverlight installations, you can see that there's you know, many different versions in our environment. Um, so you can here click on any of these versions and you'll get an overview of specifically the machines with that version. So that means that if there is a new vulnerability out for a specific version of a software, you can simply also head over to the software tab, find the software and then see all the machines that have the latest version, which is fixed, um, or simply find computers that have an outdated in, uh, version as well. We also regularly release uh, vulnerability reports, which are specialized um, and kind of give you an overview um, of all the up-to-date and out-of-date uh, machines that, ha that are running a vulnerable piece of software. Um, we'll take a look at those later on as well. So that's it for this episode. Next episode, we'll take a look at reporting within Landsuper and how you can use it effectively for your cybersecurity. Um, so feel free to check that one out. <laughs>